More WWE cuts incoming, Randy Orton's return, plus so much more. Don't forget, we're giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers. Welcome back to TAS. I'm your boy, Ango. We're going to kick things off with some very interesting news surrounding the WWE advertising. We talked about this on the channel nine months ago. So Nick Khan gave us an idea of what to expect, and now it looks like it could be happening even sooner because Dave Meltzer wrote about this in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter. He says, another change you can expect is the look of the ringside area. In the past, Vince McMahon was a proponent of a clean ring, meaning no advertising on the mats, the barricades, or around the ring. Obviously, that has changed due to the influence of Nick Khan. They noted that Vince is no longer thinking that way and that advertising is... Uh, advertising in or around the ring will be op opening up more advertising inventory, and they are very happy McMahon agreed to it. So keep in mind, Vince McMahon is currently the chairman of the company. He has no creative input, but he is still the chairman of WWE, but he has a boss, and his boss is Ari Emanuel, and he's got to make his boss happy. So when Nick Khan talked about this nine months ago, it's obviously been a process, but now it seems like it's going to be happening. And I am one of the people that absolutely do not mind the over, you know, over advertising stuff. Like if they want to overdo it, that's completely fine. Get that bag, get that money. More money means more opportunities. And with more opportunities comes great success. Uh, you see AEW currently doing it with the DraftKings logo. Impact Wrestling just did it uh, recently. Plus, you got the UFC and boxing. You know, it's pretty normal to see sponsors and advertisements on the ring. It's, it's you know, in WWE, they've kind of been doing it lately where it shows up on the LED barricade. Uh, yeah, I'm cool with it, man. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think some people are making it a big deal because they're like, oh, it's all about money. It is all about money. That's business. I, I mean, honestly, I think it's a pretty stupid decision for Vince McMahon to not actually take advantage of that in the past. Nick Khan obviously understands he these guys they watch boxing they watch mma if you watch the ufc they got prime logo monster logo all these different logos you got to get that money that's a good way to get the money i don't understand why somebody would be against it now with that being said yes you want it to look clean and presentable you don't want to just have a million logos smothered everywhere but ultimately i don't think there's anything wrong with it and if there was a company that was going to introduce it, it obviously would be Endeavor slash TKO. Uh, this is one of those things I fully support. And the last thing I want to mention in terms of the ring advertising, this was something that was spoken about nine months ago. Nick Khan has been pretty transparent about wanting to do this. Nick Khan thinks about the money. He thinks about the international shows and the advertising and the sponsors. And this is something that WWE could actually improve in. I know it, they do pretty well with advertising, but it's something that they could actually improve in. This is one of those things that would help them. I want to turn our attention to Randy Orton. Obviously, there's been a lot of talks about Randy Orton potentially being cleared. Now, WWE is making a big change to the War Games match or Survivor Series. And the common belief here is that Randy Orton will be a special uh, surprise for this match. Dave Meltzer reported that there was reports that this five, well, four on four War Games match will actually change and become a five on five match. He says that the belief is Drew McIntyre will be part of the Judgment Day team, and he was told that this is under consideration and could happen. This would lead to someone having to be added to the other side, which obviously makes sense for it to be Randy Orton because Randy Orton, big baby face reaction, which kind of gets me thinking. We've been talking a lot about adversity for Cody Rhodes on this channel. If you follow this channel, I talk about Cody needing to fight adversity. We still got a little bit of time until Cody Rhodes goes to WrestleMania 40 and hopefully finishes the story, but he's got to get there. Randy Orton should return as a babyface. Randy Orton should turn heel on Cody Rhodes and cost them the match. I will do a full prediction video for Survivor Series. I'm sure I will elaborate this so much more. But please just understand that Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton as a heel would be a freaking amazing story. And then I want to start the agenda. Randy Orton for World Heavyweight Championship at some point in 2024. This guy is not going to have several years left. I would love to see him win the World Championship again. And I would love to see Randy Orton put in that top spot for WWE Raw. They need it. Drew McIntyre, top heel. Randy Orton, 
surprise reaction. And they could do it exactly the same way that they did it with Kevin Owens when he was in the NXT War Games. It was a surprise. It was very nice. It was very cool. I enjoyed that. You could do the same thing with Randy Orton. Or if you want Randy Orton to be a babyface for one night and then turn heel on Raw the next night, that is completely fine too. But ultimately, Randy Orton on the babyface team, Drew McIntyre on the heel team, it just makes a little too much sense. And then I think the real question is, does Drew McIntyre actually join the Judgment Day or does Drew McIntyre just kind of do his own thing as a standalone heel? I think both scenarios are ones that I enjoy. Randy Orton, obviously been missed. People miss Randy Orton. I miss Randy Orton. The fact that it's come out that he's actually healthy and he's cleared, it's amazing news. And uh, I think we're just all excited to see him back. Whatever role he plays, I I feel like I'm super excited for. But this is one of those things like War Games is going to be a really good War Games this year. Like that's for sure. If there's one thing that's a guarantee, I think a lot of people are going to be very happy with this. And that's all storytelling. And when you tell good stories and you get to that payoff, I think that's that's how you get people bought in. And then finally, Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes gets Cody Rhodes away from the Judgment Day, which I think we can all agree needs to happen. And that brings us to our final topic of today's video, WWE making more cuts. Uh, This is very interesting for a lot of reasons because WWE just had several cuts. Um, That happened in September. So now we're going, we're November 10th as of this recording. So it's only been two months and WWE is expected to make more cuts. On the TKO earnings call uh, yesterday, basically they had pointed out that there would be more cuts coming to the corporate side. This would eliminate jobs in IT, marketing, finances, human resources, and legal. And basically, this is because of the staff that are in the UFC and the staff in the WWE. They are overlapping each other. It's become a little bit redundant, and they don't need to keep everybody in those positions. The company, by making these cuts, are expected to save anywhere from around 50 to $70 million, which is obviously a significant amount of money. And for those who are wondering if roster cuts could be happening Just want to leave you with this little tidbit of information because, unfortunately, while they don't say talent will be cut, we didn't think talent would be cut last time. And then we saw there was about 10 releases that happened in September. Now, the thing is, those WWE releases that happened came to a whole bunch of people who were not being utilized. People who didn't have a vision, WWE didn't have a vision for them at all. They didn't have a plan to use them. And yes, it sucks. Anytime somebody loses their job, it sucks. I don't wish that upon anybody. But ultimately, as a business, you have to understand that if they're not being utilized, they are getting paid a lot of money to do nothing. And it sucks and it's unfortunate. And that is why I am a big proponent of having a healthy wrestling industry. Because as far as business goes, Tony Khan, Vince McMahon, Ari Emanuel, Triple H, Shawn, uh, Shawn Michaels, Scott Demore, uh, Court Bauer. It doesn't matter. Any of these people who got to make these decisions, as much as they might not want to cut somebody, when it comes down to money, they are running a business and they might have to. So the healthier the industry is, the more places for work, meaning more chances for people to have a job in the industry. That's why I want to see the smaller companies win. So yes, they're not outright telling you that talent will be cut. And I don't know if talent will be cut. But when push comes to shove, if they need to save a little bit more money, they will cut the talent that aren't being used. They are going to cut the talent that they don't have a vision for. So hopefully WWE doesn't have to do that. But ultimately, at the same time, too, it is a business and they got to run their business. I want to know what you guys think. Don't forget, I'm giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers. So go ahead and click subscribe today.